say, when you know the truth, the truth will make you free. Other version says the truth will set you free. But I like King James. It says the truth, the truth will make you free. It will manufacture you. Make you free. And the only way to know the truth is to become the student of the word of God. Be a student of the word of God. Be a student of the Holy Spirit. And always hear the voice of God leading you into that same truth. Every other voice will lead you away from the truth. But only the voice of God will lead you into the truth. Listen, child of God, there are so many people outside there fighting the truth. They argue the word of God. They fight the word of God. But I would like to tell you, it is impossible for you to fight against the truth. The truth will always win. You cannot fight the word of God. You cannot fight the word of God. The word of God will always win. So take advantage of God's word. Be a student of the word. Be a student of the Holy Spirit. And always follow the word, the voice of God. Because he will always lead you to life. So this afternoon I want to share with you a portion of scriptures. If time allows, we may read all of it, but given to the time that we have, we may read it in bits. And that is Matthew chapter 25 from verses 1. We can read all the way to verse 13. It talks about the parable of the ten virgins. And it says, the kingdom of heaven is like the ten virgins. The kingdom of God, of heaven, is like ten virgins. In other words, when you see the ten virgins, I want you to see the kingdom of God. When you see the kingdom of God, I want you to see the ten virgins. But what really does the ten virgins also mean? It means that you are now born again. It means you have been renewed from within. You are a new creation. That's what it means to be virgin. The Bible declares that anything that is in Christ Jesus is a new creation. Behold, all the past has been taken away and all things are new. But simply tells me for you to be a virgin, you must have come to this point. So, this portion of scripture is specifically talking to us, the church, to you, the body of Christ. So, we are not talking to unbelievers in these scriptures. We are talking about the body of Christ, the church. So let's go into the word and see what the word says. Verses 1 says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened or likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. They took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. In other words, they had a destination and that destination was to meet the bridegroom. That also tells me these people were not just virgin, ten virgins, but the Bible tells me they might have been the groom moving forward to meet the bridegroom.
They took their love. That's the other thing I want you to understand. They carried something. They did not just walk. They did not just wake up and go. They carried something and what they carried is called the lambs. And the Bible is so specific when you read. It says they took their lambs. They did not take lambs. They took their, it was theirs, specific tailor-made. What they took belonged to them. What they took was theirs. And they went forth to meet the bridegroom. So the question is, what is that they carried? There were so much to carry. Why did they carry the lamp? What is the lamp? Why do you need the lamp? Listen, child of God, and I want you to understand this. Salvation is a journey. And on this journey, you need to be led in every step of your life. It is impossible for you to lead yourself. Some places you're going to pass is full of darkness. Some areas of your life you cannot contain even yourself. Have you ever been left in a room, in a dark room somewhere, and then your mind begins to imagine things? You begin to imagine things that are not there. It is because the devil is trying to convince you that you are on the wrong path. That's why you need a lamp in such a moment as that. That when darkness has eaten up an area of your life, the lamp can shine out and give light so that you can keep moving. Praise the name of the Lord. So I want you to understand, in all things they carry to meet the bridegroom, they carry the lambs. And the Bible says they carry their lambs. They took their lambs. So I want us to go through the word of God, through scriptures, to understand exactly what they carry. If you can come with me in Psalms 119 and verses 105, the Bible says, Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. He's talking about your word, the word of God. And he says, The word of God is the lamp. The word of God is the lamp and the light to my path. Your path needs to be shined upon. You need light, not from the politics of the day, not from the wisdom of the day, not from the rudiments of the men of this world. No, you need light from the word of God. So we understand what they carry was not just a lamp. They are lamp, but they carry the word of God. Their word of God. In this life, child of God, if you're going to command victory, if you're going to excel and exceed the past, you must get acquainted not only with the word of God, but with your word of God. Jesus said, man cannot live by bread alone, but man needs to live by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. That means, whatever God speaks to you, 
It is what you're supposed to live by. Not what you hear from the media. Not what you hear from your neighbors. Not what you hear from the internet. But from the word of God. They took their lives. They took their word of God. In Psalms 87 verse 3. This is what the Bible says. Glorious things are spoken of you, child of God. Glorious things are spoken of you. You are a city of God. There are glorious things that have been echoed, spoken over your life. There is no foreigner in the kingdom of God. In this universe, there is nothing like I just happened. No. We all showed up and there was something we came with. Many of us who have not understood it. We live in life trying to earn people's, you know, appointments, you know, approvals. We are telling people, please approve us. Are we right? Are we doing it okay? But we cannot follow that which God spoke concerning us. We don't even know it. How can you have a marriage without the word of God? How can you keep a family without the word of God? How can you build your business without the word of God? Hallelujah. So David is telling us what the love is. The love is the word of God. You need the word of God. You need the word of God. Remember in Genesis chapter 1, the Bible said God created heaven and earth. But there was something with the earth. It was void, empty. Darkness was ruling over. The spirit of God was hovering over the waters and then in verse 3 the Bible said God began to speak and he says let there be and as he began to speak things began to show up and one of the things that showed up is light why because you cannot function in darkness you cannot function in ignorance you cannot function in with no knowledge. Listen, many of us are victims of the enemy simply because we don't even know what we carry. Listen, child of God, it is impossible for you to find an armed robber with a gun and is fighting a street king or stealing from a street family. It is impossible. They all attack those in mansions, those in built up wealthy places. Those are they attack it. Why? Because they know they have everything they need. They have the money. They have everything. So they will not find you. You will not find a armed robber fighting a chocolate. It's impossible. The devil has been attacking you, fighting you, left, right, and center. You begin a business, he fights you. You begin a marriage, he fights you. You begin whatever you start, there are battles after battles in your life. But the problem is you don't know what you carry. Hallelujah. Jesus said in 1 John chapter 4, verses 4, He says, Great is He that is in you than He that is in the world. What He declared over your life, child of God, is greatness. He says, In you, you carry greatness. In you, you carry undeniable abilities. In you, you carry a force that can cause life. In you, 
the answers to this universe. The challenges of your family, you carry the answers, the solutions within you. So, do you know what God has spoken over your life? The love is the word of God specifically over your life. So stop walking in people's words. Stop looking for men and women to prophesy over your life. Go get your word from God. Seek his face. Let him speak into your life. Hear his voice. Get acquainted with his voice. Hallelujah. So the first thing we see which is called the love, their loves, is the word of God. Come with me in Proverbs 6 and verses 26. Proverbs 6 and verses 26. This is what the Bible says. Proverbs 6 and verses 23. Not 26, I'm sorry. 23. This is what the Bible says. In verses 23, I'm reading from King James. It says, For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Glory to Jesus. Let me read it to you in a good news version. It says, Instructions are a shining light. Their correction can teach you how to live. Hallelujah. So the word commandment simply means instructions. Hallelujah. And it says commandment is the land. Instructions is the land. When you miss the instructions of life, you won't live. It says the collection of this instruction can teach you how to live. The word of God is not just coming to you as the voice of God, but it also comes to you as instructions of how to live. In Genesis, God spoke to man, Genesis chapter 2, and he says, this garden is yours. Keep it, tilt it, cultivate it, guard it. And he says, there are trees in this garden. One of it is a tree of life, eat on it. The other one is a tree of knowledge of good and evil, don't eat it. And then, all of a sudden, one day, Adam is seated somewhere and the wife is conversing with the serpent somewhere and boom he discovers in his hand is the fruit of the forbidden tree and he's eating the fruit that God had told him not to eat of. He missed the instructions and the Bible says in the day you shall eat of it, you shall surely die. On the day you shall eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall surely die. And that was the day that man died. Many of us, we live with people around us, but they are living dead. You see them physically, but spiritually, they are declared dead. Why? Because they don't obey the instructions of life. They don't carry wherever they go the instructions of life. When you read Proverbs 6, the next verse from verses 20, uh, verses 24, is talking about a woman. Keep thee from the evil woman from the flattery of tongues of a strange woman is telling you there is an evil woman this world is full of evil women 
Knowing men and women with flattering tongues. They are there to deceive you, to lie to you, to cause you, to lure you from the, your path of life. And to make you sin against your God. How are you going to beat them? How are you going to overcome them? How are you going to walk out of their traps? Keep the instructions. Keep what? The instructions. Know how to live by keeping the command. Praise the name of the Lord. Instructions. Instructions. They bring knowledge to you. Instructions. They make you informed. You know what you're supposed to do and what you're not supposed to do. Where you're supposed to be and what you're not supposed to be. Where you're not supposed to be. Why? Because instructions. They give you all that information. Life was never designed to be hard. That's one of the greatest truths I came into my life to understand. When you look at all these gadgets we use, they have been simplified, made so easy for you to use, that sometimes all you need is to click a button. And all the information you need will begin downloading itself. That's how life is. Follow instruction. And everything that you need will come to you. This is what Jesus said. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. His righteousness. And all these other things will follow you. Seek him first. Seek him first. Don't seek wealth. Seek him the kingdom of God. Don't seek money. Seek the kingdom of God. Don't seek friends in higher places. Seek the kingdom of God. Don't seek for anointing. Seek the kingdom of God. I said, you what are you talking about? I need the anointing. I know. But God, Jesus, there is nowhere in the Bible Jesus ever told us to seek the anointing. Nowhere. Nowhere. The only thing he told you is the anointing within you shall teach you. Hallelujah. That means when you seek the kingdom of God, you activate a teacher within you. It's called the anointing. He begins instructing you how to live. He begins teaching you how to make the best of your life. Glory to Jesus. You need to follow the commands. Your command is the land. That is number two. Walk with me in the book of uh, Second Samuel. Second Samuel chapter 22. Verses 29. Verses 29. This is what it says. Thou art my lamp, O Lord, and the Lord will lighten my darkness. He said, The Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord is the lamp. My love is the Lord. That's why David said, Thy word is the love and the light to my path. Now, according to Samuel, he's telling us that the Lord is my love. Paul said it this way He said, The Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Liberty. He's talking about freedom. He's talking about victory from strength. He's talking about you to overcome your inconvenience. 
Glory to God. And he said, The Lord is that spirit of victory. Now, there, somebody is telling us, The Lord, who is that spirit? The Lord, who is that spirit of victory? The Lord, who is that spirit of freedom? Is the Lamb, my Lamb. Glory to God. One day Paul was moving and he, he spoke to these Romans and he says, Guys, if the Lord be for me, who can be against me? If God is on your side, what can be against you? Listen, child of God, there is no sickness to men and women that are plagued in the Lord. There is no disease to men and women that are plagued in the Lord. It is impossible to be named among failures if you are sealed in the Lord. The Lord is my Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord is what? My love. I speak to you, child of God. Whatever you're going through, it has come to an end. Why? For you to understand these three things that I've just spoken to you. That the word of the Lord is the lamp of your life. The instructions from the Lord teaches you how to live. That means whatever lessons you learned before no longer matter. You're going to re-educate yourself by going into the word of God. Hallelujah. Get the word of God that belongs to you. That says I am rich, I'm not poor. Hallelujah. I am blessed, I'm not cursed. I am above, I'm not beneath. Yes, you begin speaking it to yourself. Glory to God. Because whatever the word of God says, that's who you are. Not what people say. Not what the situations you're in are saying. It is the word of God. When it says you are free, you are free. To whom the Son says free, is free indeed. Today, you can access your victory. Today, you can walk into freedom. Today, you can come out of sickness and walk as the healed of the Lord. Today, the word says by his stripes, you are healed. There is no cancer against that word. There is no AIDS against that word. There is no blindness against that word. It is by his stripes he was beaten for our healing. You make it personal. 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 You become personal. Why? Because it is your word, your love. They took their lives. It is yours, personal. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You stop every other nonsense and he says, I'm taking it because it belongs to me. Listen, child of God, we need to throw away Iki Twenaito Mbwana and become serious with the word of God. Why? Because the Bible says the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take it by force. You must be an aggressive woman man you must be a man that has refused to be refused a woman that has denied to be denied Hebrews say they brought dead husbands and they said these are not our husbands our husbands we are living when we give them to you give us life husbands they refused dead ones some of them were thrown into caves with the lions and they say we don't care. Listen, child of God, you must be serious with life for life to reward you with life. Hey, 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 hey. You must be serious with life. Get the word of God. Get serious with the word of God. Get past 
impossible with the word of God. Refuse every other thing. When I was told I was a failure, I refused. I don't care what you say. I'm not a failure. I may bring you papers, and those papers are saying, I have F, F, F. That's because that's what the teacher saw. He saw failure. He saw nothing. But when it comes to me, I see a success. That's what I believe. I believe what the word of God says I am. I don't believe what everyone says. I don't care what they say. I care about what God says in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I follow what God says. What he says becomes instructions to how I live. Glory to God. Somewhere in Micah, the Bible says they will do business. Let everyone walk in the name of their God. We shall walk in the name of the Lord God, our God. Micah is trying to tell you guys, you have your gods, follow your gods. But we have the name of our God. We shall walk under that name. That name shall become our guide. That name shall become our instructor. That name shall lead us to where we are supposed to be. Refuse to be refused. Reject to be rejected, child of God. And plug out of failure. And plug into the victory that belongs to you. You are a child of destiny. You are great. You deserve better than where you are. Your situation may have defined you. It is time to redefine who you are. Get into the world. Follow that world. Let it become your instructions of life. Glory to Jesus. Someone is hearing me and is saying, Ah, you see, Pasi, I'm going to wait. Maybe I'll do it tomorrow. There is no tomorrow. We only have today. Delayed obedience is simply disobedience. So never delay and say, ah, you see, I did it. No. It is not what you did, when you did it. It is how you did it. Because when God says do it, you have to do it. Follow the instructions. Every step of your life, the path of a righteous man shines brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter to the dawning of the day. Refuse to be among the victims. Choose to follow the word of God. Choose to follow life. Choose to follow greatness. Choose to follow the instructions that are given to you. You are my love. Carry the Lord wherever you go. Let the master be master over your life. When he says don't go here, don't go. When he says don't do this, don't do it. When he says arise, let's go. Arise and walk. You can be there on the party right now, enjoying good friends, enjoying good meals. And he says, arise. Let's go. Our time here is over. Just arise and follow him. Listen. And listen this very carefully. It is impossible for you to excel in the kingdom of God if you always give the Lord a second place. It is impossible. Choose Him. Let Him be the first in your life. The Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 15, it says, sanctify the Lord God in your heart. Let Him be the Lord. Let Him be God. Let Him be everything for your life. Many of us who still have many priorities, 
With the law, there are not many priorities. It's only one priority, the Lord. The Lord. I want to pray for you. This afternoon. That the Lord will help you to stand out by realizing His word in your life and actualizing the instructions from that word into your daily life. This is how we live. The law is Lord, not just a sin. And God again, no, is the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Just lift up your hands wherever you are. I want to pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray. May you bless your people massively. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Increase their strength right now. In Jesus' name. I reduce every other voice in you to nothing. And I amplify the voice of God in you. May you hear He when you go to bed. May you hear He at your workplace. May you hear He in a matatu or a taxi. May you hear Him at your home. May you hear Him from your children. May everywhere you are, Voice of God be activated in you. He speak life to you. You who is sick, be healed now. Be healed now from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. I command your organs to be healed now. The eyes were meant to see, the ears were meant to hear, the heart was meant to pump blood in your body. I speak life in Jesus' name. Be healed. Be healed. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. I declare life to your family. Life to your children. Life to your business. I speak wholeness over your life. Be blessed. Be highly favored. Wherever you go, May you be known as the anointed of the Lord. May the word of God become a reality in your life. May the instructions of life lead you to a better life. May the Lord be crowned Lord in every detail of your life. You are blessed in Jesus' name.